Picture this. Instead of meeting people in person, you can easily meet people online through apps like Snapchat and Instagram. These social media sites allow people to form friendships without meeting them in person. This is how people in Generation Z socially interact. Hi, my name is Caitlin Kramer, and I'm going to talk about how social interaction has changed over the years. Technology has had many positive and negative effects. It brings people closer together and farther apart simultaneously. In my experience, it has connected me with many people that live in my town that I have not met in person. It is amazing that through technology, we are able to meet many more people. But how does this affect us in the long run? Some people replace face-to-face -face relationships with online relationships. This can cause people to become lazy and they never want to leave their personal environments. No one has to leave their house anymore to have a conversation with someone. Ultimately, this can cause people to socially isolate themselves from society. People don't even have to face anyone to order a cup of coffee anymore. Apps have made it possible for customers to order their coffee online, and all the customers have to do is pick it up once it's ready. They do not have to face the daily social conflicts we might encounter. If we never face these daily social conflicts, we might not know how to deal with small inconveniences that can stimulate conflict. For example, standing in a long line or having the barista accidentally take your order wrong. The only thing in real life that does not have to face these social conflicts are robots. Is it possible that we are becoming more robotic than human? One time, I was eating lunch with my mom at the airport, and the restaurant we were eating at made us order food off of iPads. These iPads were placed upright in the center of the table, so we could not see each other. These iPads also had video games on them, so we could play them instead of engaging in conversation. If we constantly are accustomed to having a screen in front of us, we are no longer interacting with humans or with computers. What is the value of face-to-face -face contact for humanity? When we interact face-to-face, -face, we are really able to grasp each other's emotions. Receiving a text saying, I love your outfit, or LOL, does not have the same emotional impact as seeing someone smile when they say they love your outfit, or hearing people laugh at your joke. Online social interaction can be very superficial. I have seen people text their friends, ha ha ha, this is so funny, with a straight face. I know that I have done this as well. What is the value of having these strong social connections? Strong social connections can increase life expectancy. According to Duke University, people with strong social connections have a lesser chance of dying from life-threatening medical conditions. Additionally, the New York Times reported that people with limited social contact can have a depleted immune system and weakened blood flow. There are also mental health effects, including depression and loneliness. According to Oregon Health and Science University, people with limited face-to-face -face contact are two times as likely to develop depression. Also, Relationships Australia conducted a survey in 2011, and the results concluded that technology has made a lonelier society. The people involved in the survey said their loneliness was due to less face-to-face -face contact. On the contrary, people, social media has helped people who are struggling with social anxiety because it allows people to socially interact without having the pressures of interacting in person. People can confront each other via text and social media to avoid the awkwardness of doing it in person. For example, a friend can confront a friend about an issue or ask someone to hang out behind the screen. Texting and social media has become a shield to awkward situations. How will technology affect the generations behind us socially? Young children in preschool through high school have grown up with technology at their fingertips. While it brings many advantages, it can bring many disadvantages. Sometimes when I go out to dinner, I see young children eating with their friends or family on their iPads or iPhones, rather than engaging in conversation. If we go on technology rather than engage in conversation, we might become dependent on it and not know how to interact face to face anymore. The younger generation communicates in a different form than the older generation. The younger generation communicates 
via texting and social media, whereas the older generation communicates via face-to-face -face contact and email. Maybe one day, when Generation Z enters the workforce, we'll be having meetings over group text or the group FaceTime feature on Snapchat. Maybe we will even talk in Generation Z jargon. Many people text and talk in Generation Z jargon. This includes texting, emojis, pictures, and acronyms. Whenever I send a text or anything over social media, I will replace words for short catchphrases. For example, when I send the word you, I will replace it with the letter U. Or when I receive a funny text, I will respond LOL. People have even begun to talk in these acronyms. A common response to a joke is, lol, that was so funny. Additionally, people in Generation Z have their own catchphrases. For example, when someone is shocked, they will say bruh, or when someone is showing up, they will say flexing. We also communicate in the form of memes. Memes are pictures with captions attached to them. Although memes are normally supposed to be funny, there are many different types and can be used as a casual way of communicating. Maybe in the future, everyone will be communicating in the form of memes. Although there are many downsides to technology, there are also many upsides. Because of technological innovations and the internet, people have been able to communicate much faster and with people all over the globe. I know that I have been able to maintain friendships with my friends that live a plane ride, plane ride away because of social media, texting, and FaceTime. People from different countries that speak different languages have been able to communicate effectively because of the universal international language, Globish. Robert Marier, who is the vice president at App, who was Vice President of International Marketing at IBM, invented this language, Globish. During his international meetings, he noticed that there was a language barrier, and this made it hard to communicate effectively. So his solution was to invent the language Globish. Globish consists of 1,500 English words. Narier believes that one can communicate effectively with only these words. I believe that Globish was stimulated by the increase of fast communication technology. Hundreds of years ago, and even just 30 years ago, Globish was not needed because it was hard to communicate internationally. Now it is needed because we can communicate internationally in just a split second. I believe that pictures and emojis can also help break the language barrier. Although it might not break much of the language barrier, it will help people communicate their emotions without using words. It is obvious that technology has changed the way we socially interact. Before the internet and social media, people communicated face-to-face -face more often. Now people can have an in-depth and meaningful conversation without leaving their house. Technology increases communication at the expense of face-to-face -face contact. While humanity might need more in-depth relationships, social media helps expand people's social circles. It will be interesting to see how the future generations use social media and technology. I know that many people my age love social media, but I also know that many people hate it and wish it didn't exist. Will people in the long run reject or embrace social media? Only the future knows. Thank you.